This tutorial shows you how to make maps that are suitable for publication in books and journal articles. This tutorial uses the open source GIS software QGIS, which works across platforms, including Mac, Windows, and Linux machines. This tutorial assumes that you already have QGIS installed. In previous tutorials, you have seen me use a different GIS program called GRASS-GIS. I still prefer GRASS for day-to-day -day GIS operations, and this is because GRASS is high-powered and has the most functionality overall. Plus, GRASS teaches about the importance of keeping track of your map properties like the projection and the ellipsoid. But GRASS is not well equipped for map making customized maps that are suitable for publication. And for this purpose, I prefer QGIS. This tutorial assumes you are using Ubuntu Linux version 20.04 as your operating system. If you do not have Linux, you can emulate it on your Windows computer for free. Older Mac computers can emulate Ubuntu Linux for free as well, but newer Mac computers containing the M1 chip will require you to purchase the software Parallels for about $50. See the show notes for details. I am emulating Linux right now on my older Mac computer using VirtualBox. I have VirtualBox virtual machines pre-configured with the software I will show you today, as well as other population genetics and ecological niche modeling software. But again, VirtualBox will only run under Windows machines and under older Mac machines before the new M1 computer chips. See the show notes below for step-by-step -step instructions to download and hook up this virtual machine within your Windows or older Mac computer using VirtualBox. Let's get started. First, open up a web browser. Navigate to my website, joshbanta.com. Click on Tutorials. For this next step, do not hit the search button. Instead, type Control F and then search for Part 1, writing out the word 1. Part 1, how to make a publication-ready map based upon various GIS layers. Click on it. Click on Files Needed for Tutorial Updated. And click the Download button to download the file. When, when the download is complete, you can close your browser window. Open up File Explorer. Navigate to your Downloads folder. Double-click on the file we just downloaded, newqgis.zip. This opens up an archive directory. The .zip file is a compressed archive, and by double-clicking on it, we opened up the Software Archive Manager, which allows us to peer inside of this compressed archive. However, we cannot run any programs or open up the files inside of the compressed zip ar archive. Click on File Explorer, navigate to your desktop, Click on the drop-down arrow next to the word Desktop and select New Folder. We will call this folder QGIS. Click on Create. Double-click on the QGIS folder. Now we'll move File Explorer off to the side and we'll come back to our Archive Manager. With Archive Manager selected, whoops, Hit Control-A. 
This highlights all of the files within the compressed zip archive. Regular click on any of the icons on the left and hold the click to drag all of the files into the QGIS directory on our desktop. Now the files have been copied from the compressed zip archive onto our desktop and are ready to use. You may close your archive manager. You may also close File Explorer. Next, open up a terminal window and type QGIS. The first thing we'll do before we get anything going is to save our project. Go to Project and from the drop down menu select Save As. Navigate to your desktop, double click on QGIS, delete where the, where the name says QGIS forward slash, delete the words QGIS forward slash. In its place, write QGIS map and click on Save. Now it will be easy for us to save our work as we go. As you're moving along through this exercise, periodically come and click the button that says Save Project so that if something goes wrong, you won't lose your work up to that point. Now we will start importing GIS layers into QGIS. But before we can add layers, actually, we need to set the datum, the ellipsoid, and the projection of our QGIS map. Find Project from the list at the top, and from the drop-down menu, select Properties. Click on CRS. You can probably make out the little icon of a projection on top of a globe. We're going to search to find the right one that we need. Type in 26915. This is the specific EPSG code for the combination of projection, datum, and coordinate system that I want us to use for this tutorial. So here it is. It's a universe, universal transmercator projection for zone 15 north, and it uses the North American datum version 1983. So select that, click OK. With our map defined, we will now start importing layers. Choose Layer from the menu at the top, select Add Layer. All of the layers we will be using in today's tutorial will be vector layers. So choose Add Vector Layer. For the source, click on the three dots. Navigate to the QGIS folder on your desktop and double click on it. Find the roads layer at the bottom, ushighwayslimited.shp. All of the layers we are using today are in the Esri shapefile format, allowing for portability of these layers between GrassGIS, QGIS, and other GIS programs such as ArcGIS, and even the... This is a quick splice to ask you to consider subscribing to my channel by hitting the subscribe button. It does not cost anything. It is totally free. But if you like what I am doing and want to support my work, I encourage you to visit patreon.com slash joshbanta and make a voluntary contribution. The link is in the show notes below. Your support helps me to deliver new content and keep this channel current and vibrant. Thank you. Uh, Swiss Army Knife Program R. For shapefiles, always select the file that ends in .shp. With that highlighted, click Open. Click the Add button. You won't see it be added because this dialog window is blocking the screen, but you can now close the dialog window. And you can see that the roads layer has been added. This being a tutorial on making maps that you can use in publications, 
Style matters. In this tutorial, I will give you many design ideas that you can expound upon when you are using your own data to create your own maps. With the US Highways layer highlighted, right click on it with a window style mouse or push down with two fingers on a Mac trackpad and select properties. With the Symbology tab highlighted, click on Simple Line. And we're going to make the line red. This vector layer is comprised of lines because it's showing highways. Choose the drop-down arrow next to Color, and then click on Choose Color. We're going to specify the RGB values of the color, which corresponds to the amount of red, the amount of green, and the amount of blue. We are going to select 255, 0, 0 to get a very pure red. Click on OK. Next, we're going to change the stroke width to 1. And now we will click on OK. But we don't know what these highways are. Let's add labels. Come back to the Highways layer, go back to the Properties, click on Labels. Where it says No Labels, open up the drop-down menu and choose Single Labels. For Value, QGIS wants to know which attribute of the layer has the label names. In this case, the label names are kept in a column called Name. So have that selected. We'll keep the font as Ubuntu, but there's many other fonts that you could choose from. For the style, we'll select bold. For the size of our labels, we'll select 20 points. We're going to change the color of the font to red to match the color of the roads layer. The red color is listed under recent colors. Click OK. Now this looks a little bad right now, but when we zoom in later, this will look much better. Next, we will add a cities layer, cities and towns. Go to layer from the top. Again, choose add layer and again, choose add vector layer. With the vector tab highlighted under source, Click on the three dots and navigate once again to the QGIS folder on your desktop. The Cities and Towns layer is called Strat, Stratmap. Highlight stratmaplimited.shp and click on Open. Click on Add. And then click on Close. The little brownish blobs on my screen are the town and city boundaries. Something to keep in mind, the order that the layers appear in the table of contents reflects the order that the layers were, will appear on the map. This is the same as in GRASS-GIS. To illustrate, I've highlighted the highways layer I'm going to regular click on it and hold the click, and I'm going to move that layer above the cities layer in the tree. This has moved the cities and the towns behind the roads layer so that the roads layer is painted on top of the cities layer. Let's also fix up the cities layer some more. Highlight the Cities layer, right-click on a Windows-style mouse or push down with two, two fingers on a Mac trackpad and select Properties. Click on the Symbology tab and click on Simple Fill. Click on the drop-down arrow next to Fill Color and click on Choose Color. 
for the fill color for the boundaries of these towns and cities, we're going to make it a gray color. So we're going to set the red to 211, the green to 211, and the blue to 211. Click OK. For the outline, we'll keep the stroke color as black and we'll keep the stroke width very narrow. Just a faint outline around these towns. Click OK. You can't see them very well. Let's just zoom in so you can see better how this all looks. So I'm just going to zoom in on a little piece here. So now you can see the roads and underneath it you can see the municipal boundaries like this one here corresponding to the city of Tyler. Next, let's import a rivers layer. Go back up to layer, go to add layer and choose add vector layer. With the vector tab selected, click on the three dots under source. And our rivers layer is called limited NHD flow line. Select the .shp file and click on open. Click add and then close the dialog window. You can see that all of the rivers have been added. This is actually rivers and streams. And I want this rivers layer to be painted underneath the highways layer, but above the cities layer. So make sure that you have the order of your layers the same as the order of the layers on my screen. Let's see how the rivers layer and streams layer looks at the full spatial extent. Highlight the rivers and streams layer, right click on a Windows mouse or push down with two fingers on a Mac trackpad and select zoom to layer. Well, it sure is showing a lot of rivers and streams. Too many, in fact. This map is getting too messy. For the purposes of this tutorial, we are just going to focus on the Natchez and the Angelina rivers. Similarly, when you make your own maps, you will have to decide what features are the most important that you want to highlight and focus your maps on those features. Keep that in mind in the future when you use your own data. To narrow in on just the Natchez and the Angelina rivers, highlight the rivers layer and then right click on a Windows mouse or push down with two fingers on a Mac trackpad and select open attribute table. This column here, GNIS name, contains the information about the rivers. So if we click on GNIS name, it will sort the data table by all of the line segments by their name. And if we scroll down, we will eventually see the Angelina River, where each one of these lines in the data table matches a river segment that has the name Angelina River. Because our vector layer is made up of lines, where these lines connect to each other, and each line segment that's the Angelina River is listed here in the data table. One way we could highlight the entire Angelina River would be to highlight each of these rows in the data table that says Angelina River, but that would be very tedious. And then we would have to do the same thing again for the Natchez River. Let me show you a shortcut. Click on the button at the top that says Select slash Filter Features using Form. The column of the attribute table that contains the names of our rivers is GNIS underscore name. Click on that box and type in Angelina. You'll see that the autocomplete helpfully shows you the Angelina River. Select it. Next, do not click the button Select Features. Click, click on the drop down arrow next to the Select Features button and choose Add to Current Selection from the drop-down menu. It was successful. 119 river segments matching the name Angelina River were selected. 
Next, click the button again that says Select Slash Filter Features. Erase Angelina River from the GNIS underscore name column. Next, type in Natchez. The name of the river is suggested to you. Choose it. And again, do not click the Select Features button. Click on the drop-down arrow next to the Select Features button and choose Add to Current Selection. Again, it was successful. We have now selected from the data table all of the river segments named Angelina River and all of the river segments named Natchez River. You may close the dialog window. And you can see, although not very well, that the river segments called Natchez are highlighted and the river segments called Angelina are highlighted. With the rivers layer highlighted in the table of contents, right click on it on a window style mouse or push down with two fingers on a Mac trackpad and then choose Export from the drop-down menu and select the second option, Save Selected Features As. Make sure that the box is checked that says Save Only Selected Features. Under the Format from the drop-down menu, choose Esri Shapefile. For the file name, click on the three dots. Navigate to your desktop and then double click on the QGIS folder. And then within the QGIS folder, delete the words QGIS forward slash in the name. And we will call this Angelina and Natchez. And click on Save. Now click the button that says OK. And now we can uncheck this layer that has all of the rivers. And now we see only the Natchez and the Angelina rivers. We need to make the colors of the Natchez and Angelina rivers and the thickness of those uh, river vector lines stand out more. To do that, highlight the Angelina and Natchez river layer right-click on a Windows-style mouse or push down with two fingers on a Mac trackpad and choose Properties. From the Symbology tab, select Simple Line. For the color, click the drop-down arrow next to Color and select Choose Color. We're going to choose the color by red, green, and blue color values. To do that, we're going to set the red to zero the green to 0, and the blue to 255 to give us a nice solid blue color. Click OK. For the stroke width, we're going to set the width much thicker. Instead of 0.26, we're going to set it to 2 so that the rivers really stand out. Click OK. And as you can see, the rivers really stand out. And I assure you that things look better when we zoom in. And you will be zooming in later on as a part of this map making process, showing you where we're heading. I'm going to zoom back out now to the entire extent. Make sure that your rivers layer with the Angelina and the Natchez is in between the highways layer and the Cities layer in the QGIS Table of Contents. Next, we will add our points. These are GIS locations in the form of GPS coordinates of where our aquatic species was collected. Let's say that this was a species of freshwater mussels, such as, for example, the Texas pig toe, Fuscania ascui. So this is GPS data that, hypothetically, you collected and are now adding to this map. Go to Layer, Add Layer, Add Vector Layer. From the Vector tab under Source, click the three dots. 
navigate to your desktop, double click on the QGIS folder, choose All Imported Limited.shp, and click on Open. Click on Add, and then close the dialog window. The points are impossible to see because they're buried under all of the other layers. Let's bring the points up to the top. And now we can see the points much easier. We're going to change the size of these points. It will look ridiculous now, zoomed out at this very broad spatial extent, but when we zoom in, it will look much better. With the points layer highlighted, right-click on a Windows mouse or push down with two fingers on a Mac trackpad and select Properties. With the Symbology tab highlighted, click on Simple Marker. For the marker size, we're going to change it from 2 up to 8. We're going to make the circles showing where these GPS coordinates are much larger. This vector layer is in the form of points. For the fill color, we're going to choose yellow. So click on the drop down arrow next to fill color and click on choose color. Again, choosing by red, green, and blue color values, we will choose 255 for red, 255 for green, and zero for blue. Click on OK. For the border, we're going to keep the stroke color black. And the stroke width, we're going to change it from hairline to one millimeter. So we'll have very well-defined GPS points. Click OK. Notice that I have the GPS points layer above all of the other layers in the, tr in the uh, table of contents. You want to have your layers in the same order as I have them here on mine. Finally, we will add our county boundaries. Click on Layer from the top, click on Add Layer, and then choose Add Vector Layer. With the Vector tab highlighted, under Source, click on the three dots. And choose Limited Counties NHD Flowline.shp. This is actually the Counties layer. Have that highlighted and click on Open. Click the Add button and then close the dialog window. The counties layer is covering everything else up. We're going to do a few things to get rid of that problem. The first one is to move the counties layer to the bottom of the table of contents. The next thing we're going to do is with the counties layer highlighted, we're going to right click on a Windows mouse or push down with two fingers on a Mac trackpad and go to properties. And then with the Symbology tab highlighted, we're going to click on Simple Fill. We're going to click the drop-down arrow, and under there, we're going to click on Transparent Fill. We're going to get rid of the fill color for the Counties layer. For the border, the stroke color, we will keep it at black, and we will set the stroke width from 0.26 millimeters up to one millimeter. Click OK. And again, this will look much better when we're zoomed in for making the uh, professional map. Take a moment to save your work. There's one more layer that I need you to import and this will allow us all to make exactly the same maps, or almost exactly the same maps. Click on Layer. Click on Add Layer, Add Vector Layer. With the Vector tab highlighted under Source, click on the three dots. Navigate to the QGIS folder on your desktop. And choose BoundingBox.shp and click Open. Click Add, and then close the dialog window. I'm going to move the bounding box all the way to the top, 
just so you can see. This area here, this square, is the area that we will be making into the publication ready map. With your own data, you wouldn't have a bounding box like this. I'm including this so that we can all zoom in on our map to the same exact location for the purposes of making our publication ready map so that everything will be standardized as a part of this tutorial. So that's why I've included this bounding box. Uncheck the bounding box so that it's invisible and now highlight the bounding box and right click on a Windows style mouse or push down on your Mac trackpad with two fingers and choose zoom to layer. So this is the spatial extent that we will be turning into our publication quality map. So if anything ever gets off centered, you can always come back to this layer here bounding box and you can always zoom to layer again to zoom back to the proper layer and to recenter the map. Go ahead and save your work up to this point. So far, we've mostly been making our GIS database. We've done some tweaks to the layers to get them ready for making our publication quality map, but we haven't actually started making our publication quality map yet. And let me show you how that's done. Click on the project choice from the menu at the top and choose new print layout. And we will call our print layout publication map. Click OK. So now we have two windows open within QGIS. We have our QGIS database and we also have our print layout. The print layout is going to make our publication ready figure. As you can see, it is now empty. We are going to paint the images from our GIS database into the print layout using this command right here. Add a new map to the layout. Click on that. Nothing has happened yet. With the crosshairs, take the crosshairs all the way up into the corner so that they are exact, so that you see the red X showing that your crosshairs are exactly in the upper left hand corner. Regular click and hold the click and drag it all the way to the bottom right hand corner until you again get the red X in the bottom right hand corner. Then let go of the click. And there you see it. Next, we have to add some things. I'd like to add the names of our rivers. We could do that by adding the labels back in the GIS database, but it doesn't look very good. I'll show you why I didn't end up doing that. If you highlight it, again, you can go back and forth between your print layout and your GIS database. If you go back to your GIS database and you highlight the Angelina and Natchez layer and you right click on a Windows style mouse or push down on two fingers on a Mac trackpad and you go to properties, click on labels, and then from the drop down menu select single labels. The labels are kept in a column called GNIS name. And it doesn't matter how big we make these labels, we could make them size. 30. You could make it bold. Click OK. Labels aren't showing up. You could make those labels much smaller. Those labels aren't showing up. It seems like they may be buried underneath these other layers or that they're invisible for some other reason. And if I zoom in, well, then you can see the Natchez River labeled, but it's the label looks terrible. And the labels are not where we want them. And look at how it's putting the label at multiple places on the river. That's not the way we want to label it. The labels worked fine for the roads, but they do not look okay for the rivers. So I'm gonna come back here to properties 
and with the labels tab highlighted I'm going to go back to no labels we're going to have to manually add our own rivers labels I don't have labels for the towns because it would make things get too crowded This is where you will have to make choices. You'll have to decide which labels are important to show on your map when you're using your own data in the future, which layers are important. You can't possibly show all of the layers available for a map. You can't possibly show all of the labels, even if you put certain layers on there. So imagine if we did have labels next to these town names. It would be very confusing because you hear you have the road names, and then right next to it, you'd have to have some labels for the town names. It would start to get very crowded. But I do want to label the rivers. And I also want to label a few of the counties. But again, I don't want to use the default labels that we can see using our GIS database. I'll show you again. If we go here to counties and I right click or push down on the trackpad with two fingers, and I go to labels and I choose it to single labels. The labels are kept in the name column. If I click OK, the labels don't look great. And even if I make those labels big, let's say I make them 30, let's say I make them bold, click OK. If I come back here to my uh, print layout. This symbol here re-renders the map. And this is just not exactly how I want it. These labels are being put where QGIS wants to put them, and so they're going over top the roads. Look at the Angelina County down here. That's very hard to read. Smith County is actually just this little sliver up here at the top, and this label is confusing because it makes it look like Smith County is down here, but this is actually Cherokee County. So those, those labels just don't work at all. So I'm going to turn those off. Okay, and then I'm going to come back here to the print layout, and I'm going to re-render the image. So we'll add in those county labels ourselves. We also need to add a scale bar. You always need to have a scale bar on your maps to show how much does an inch represent on the globe. So an inch of the map represents, say, 10 kilometers, something like that. Whatever the scale is, you have to have a scale bar for that. And we also need to have a map legend that says what the red lines are, what the black lines are, what the yellow dots are, what the blue lines are, what the gray represents. Here's how you can add custom labels. Click on this button here that says Add Text. Come onto your canvas and drag a text box. Get it approximately the size that I just showed. Now you can see that there's tiny little writing in there. With that text box highlighted, come to the right and click on Item Properties. In the Main Properties window under Item Properties, change that to say Natchez River and put Natchez River on two lines. I worked this out by trial and error. Next, scroll down until you get to Appearance. Click the button that says Font. Do not click on the drop-down arrow. Click the button that says Font. You can use the arrow keys on your computer to scroll down to Ubuntu Mono Bold. Not Ubuntu Condensed Bold. Make sure you choose Ubuntu Mono Bold. For the size, come in here to the little window and change it to 30 and click Enter. Then press Select. There's not enough room in here, so we need to drag it a little bigger. And we can move this side of the box in a little bit. 
and I would like to place it right over here. I want to choose the font color. So now I will click on the drop down arrow next to font color. And from recent colors, I can see the blue that we chose for the river. So I'm going to make that the same color for the label. Scrolling down further, we come to rotation. I'm going to rotate the text a little bit. Click on the drop down arrow to expand the choice under rotation. And I'm going to rotate it 63 degrees. All right. And now I'm going to just move this a little bit closer to the river, like so. I'll come click out here under the gray to get rid of the box. All right, and now I'm going to do the same thing for the Angelina River, which I could do by making a new text box and following the same procedure, but there's a shortcut we can use. Click on the Natchez River label, and then type Control-C to copy it and then type control V to paste it. Take the new version and bring it over here to the Angelina River. And now under main properties, I'll change where it says Natchez to Angelina. And it's not quite big enough. The A is getting cut off, so I'll drag this out a little more so that the A appears. And then I'll just drag this whole thing down a little more so it's not touching the roads. And so now we can keep track of the labels for the roads because they're in red and the labels for the river because they're in blue. Now let's go ahead and add some county labels. Click on the button that says add text. Use the crosshairs click and hold the click and make a box and then under main properties on the right we will change this one to Anderson County and let's take up two lines scroll down to the font click on font choose Ubuntu mono bold and then change the font size to 30 and hit enter and then click the select button. We need to make the box a little bit bigger so we'll just drag it a little bit larger. All right and now and that placement looks good. So now I will highlight Anderson County and I will hit hit control C and then control V to make a copy of it and I will go over in here to Cherokee County and here I'll put the label and I'll change it from Anderson to Cherokee that looks good now I'll click on Cherokee County and I'll hit control C and then control V to make a copy. And I'll come over here to Rusk County. Let's see if we can find a good place for it. Will I be able to fit it in the corner? Just barely fits right there. Okay, next I'm going to take that Rusk County, highlight it, hit control C and then control V to make a copy of it. And we'll drag this down into Nagadochus County. And I'll change Rusk to Nagadochus, Nacog, Doches. And it needs a little more room in the text box, so I'll drag it wider. And I'll move this down. And then finally, I'll copy this, Control C. Control V, and I'll take this text box and I'll put it down here and I'll label Houston County. And 
and I'll change Nagadoches to Houston. So next, we will add our scale bar. Click on the adds a new scale bar to the layout button. And then we're going to take our crosshairs and hold down on a click and make our scale bar. We need to fix it up a little bit. So I'm going to put it all the way down in the bottom left corner. And then I'm going to come down here, keep the units kilometers, keep the segments at two because we don't have a lot of room. Click the drop down arrow next to fonts and colors. Click the font box. And we're going to use Ubuntu bold. And we'll set the size to 20 points. And now that we've done that, click the back button and continue scrolling down. Check the box that says frame. Keep the defaults. Keep the color black and the thickness at 0.3 millimeters. Check the box that says background and we'll keep the background color white. That way our scale bar is kept separate from the rest of the map and it won't blend in with the rest of the map. Now let's add our north arrow. Click the add a new north arrow to the layout button. Click on the canvas, hold the click until you've made a north arrow. Click on frame. Keep the defaults. Click on background and keep the defaults. And put the north arrow all the way in the corner. Another thing that we should do is frame our overall map so that when we print this image, there will be a frame all the way around it so it won't look like the roads just come to a dead end or that the counties just come to a dead end. To do that, click the Add Shape button, choose Add Rectangle. Start in the upper left-hand corner where you have a red X showing that you're in a, the exact upper left corner. Click, hold the click until you come to the bottom right corner and you get the red X's showing you that you're exactly in the bottom right corner. Now, of course, you can't see anything, but we're going to fix that. Click the box next to style. Don't click the drop down arrow, click the box. Choose simple fill. And then for fill color, click on the drop down arrow and choose transparent fill. Now for the border, for the, for the stroke width defining the border, we're going to set that to one, one millimeter. And now you can click the back arrow on symbol settings. And now to add our legend. Click the Add a New Legend to the Layout button, and then click, drag, and make a box. And now we have to change our legend because it has all this extra stuff in it that we don't want, and the legend is not going to make sense to anyone. We have to simplify it. Uncheck the box that says Auto Update. Let's get rid of this one that says bounding box because the bounding box is not actually a part of this map. It was something that I put in there as a tool to help us all stay on the same place. So with that highlighted, I'm going to click the minus symbol. We don't need this rivers and streams layer here because this is all rivers and streams, but we're only showing the Natchez and the Angelina. So I'll click on minus. And next, we need to change these names here 
so that these names are more sensible to some person who's looking at our figure in a professional publication. For that, we have to come back to our GIS database, and we have to change the names here. So all imported limited, highlight that layer, right click on a Windows style mouse, or push down on a trackpad with two fingers, and click on properties. Click on the source tab. And we'll change the name here to Texas Pig Toe Locations. The locations of our uh, freshwater mussel species known as the Texas Pig Toe. Click OK. Next, we'll change the highways layer the same way. We'll call it Major Highways and click OK. And Angelina and Natchez, we will change that to say Major Rivers. And Strat Map Limited, we will change that to read Cities and Towns. And limited counties NHD flow line, we will change that to read county boundaries. Okay. And now we come back to our print layout and we click the refresh button. It's refreshed, but now that font size is too small. So what we have to do is we have to click on fonts and text formatting, scroll down to item labels, and then click the box next to font. And again, we're going to choose Ubuntu Mono Bold, and for the font size, we'll choose 20. Make sure that you have frame and background selected. Keep the frame color black at 0.3 millimeters and keep the background color as white. And now let's go ahead and put this right up at the top. So now we have our north arrow, we have our scale bar, and we have our legend. So now we're ready to export our publication ready figure. Let's save our work. Now that saves it to the print layout. We also want to save our work here in the GIS database. So let's come back here to the print layout from the, the layout option at the top, choose export as image, navigate to the G QGIS folder on your desktop, and the name publication map is a good name for the figure that we're creating. Keep it as PNG format and click on save. For the export resolution, 300 dots per inch is not quite enough. Change it to, to 600 dots per inch, and then click on Save. The little spinning wheel shows that it is working. When you get this green bar, that means that it is successfully completed. Let's save our publication layout one more time, our print layout one more time. And let's close it. Let's save our GIS database one more time. And let's close it. Now you can close the terminal window as well.
Let's click on the QGIS folder on our desktop and see how our image turned out. Scroll down until you find publicationmap.png. This is our exported image file. Double click on it. This is what the final publication ready figure looks like. And there's a black border around the outside which we can't see right now, but which you would see if this image was placed into a Word document. So there you have it. I hope that this empowers you to make great figures using your own data in the future.